Hello everyone. Welcome to my series of lessons on the physics of sailing. First, I need to state my standard disclaimer. These videos are for educational and explanatory purposes only and are only intended to introduce basic topics for beginner cruisers in light to moderate wind conditions. They are not intended to guarantee your safety on the water. Nothing, including these videos, can replace taking accredited courses covering all aspects of basic cruising from qualified and experienced instructors, and gaining experience by starting slowly and increasing your knowledge and experience over time. You are responsible for obtaining a marine weather forecast and limiting your activities to weather conditions within your own level of experience and ability. When you go out on the water, you are enjoying yourself at your own risk. This lesson is about weather helm, what it is, and how to correct for it if it becomes excessive. Before we try to understand what causes weather helm, let me give you a brief explanation of what it is, and then we'll get into the details. On a close haul, the configuration of the boat is designed so that the net force of the wind in the sails acts behind the rotation center line of the boat, so the force of the wind tends to try to turn the boat up into the wind. There are advantages to this design, which we'll talk about in a moment. But to counteract this tendency of the boat to turn up wind, you need to steer downwind to hold your course. If you're steering with a tiller, that means you need to push your tiller towards the windward side of the boat, or the weather side of the boat, to hold your course. So that's called weather helm. It means pushing your tiller to the weather side of the boat to hold your course on a close haul. You're not trying to steer downwind, you're trying to hold your course. But because the wind is trying to turn your boat up into the wind, it means you have to apply a counterbalancing force downwind to hold your course. Of course, if you're steering with a wheel, you need to turn the wheel downwind to hold your course. But the term weather helm derives from pushing a tiller to the weather side of the boat to hold your course. Okay, now let's look at the two factors that contribute to weather helm. Here's the underwater profile of your boat. As you can see, the keel is around the center of the boat, and the rudder is at the aft end of the boat. These are obstructions that resist any tendency for the aft end of the boat to rotate. But the front of the boat has very little resistance to rotate. It more easily slides over the water. So somewhere around this area may be the center of rotation of your boat. This is also called the center of lateral resistance, or CLR. If you're standing on the dock beside your boat, you can locate the center of lateral resistance by pushing on the boat at various points. If you push here, for example, and the bow tends to rotate away from you, then you're pushing forward of the center of lateral resistance. If you push here and the stern tends to rotate away from you, you're pushing aft of the center of lateral resistance. When you find a point that you can push at, at which the boat tends to move smoothly away from you, with no tendency for the bow or the stern to rotate, you've found the center of lateral resistance. The location of the center of lateral resistance depends on the geometrical profile of the underwater portion of your boat. Now let's look at the sails to find the point at which the net wind force tends to act. The point at which the net force of the wind tends to act on a sail is called the center of pressure. You can approximate the center of pressure for a sail by drawing diagonal lines like this. Both your foresail and mainsail each have their own center of pressure, and the net center of pressure of the two sails together acts somewhere in between the two. How much each sail contributes to determining the location of the center of pressure depends on the size and trim of each of the sails. Now let's look at the relative positions of these two factors, the center of lateral resistance and the net center of pressure when you're sailing on a close haul. Here is the center of pressure acting as a force pushing on your boat, and it's aft of the center of lateral resistance. This is what tries to turn your boat up into the wind on a close haul or a close reach that's very close to a close haul. In light winds, or on a close reach, with your sails eased, the center of pressure may act forward of the center of lateral resistance. That could cause lee helm, 
which is the opposite of Weatherhelm, but it's generally not as severe an effect as Weatherhelm. And a balanced helm is when the two are aligned and the boat will tend to hold a course on its own. Most boats may be designed to have a certain amount of weather helm in moderate wind conditions. Here are some advantages to this design. First, it provides a positive sense of steering in moderate wind conditions. Only small changes in applying pressure on the tiller will easily affect minor course changes. Second, gusts will tend to assist in turning the boat upwind. As we saw in the last lesson, it's desirable to turn upwind in a gust, and Weatherhelm can facilitate that. Third, strong gusts will turn a smaller boat upwind before it gets knocked down. Lastly, this is especially advantageous if a helm person should lose control or fall overboard, then the boat will tend to turn up into the wind and stall. Even in larger cruising keel boats, Stronger winds may cause excessive weather helm, which may become overpowering, and you may need to take steps to reduce this effect. The boat may heel excessively, which may become very uncomfortable for your crew, and you may not be able to easily maintain your course. Or the effect can become so strong that you cannot maintain a course at all, and your boat may turn uncontrollably up into the wind and stall. This is called rounding up, and you may even unintentionally tack. So we need to understand how to reduce this effect. There are a number of different adjustments you can make to reduce excessive weather helm. Any adjustments that move the center of pressure forward or the center of lateral resistance aft will reduce weather helm. The adjustments you can make include these. First, move the crew to the windward side of the boat. A boat tends to turn away from the side that's heeled over. Reducing the heel will reduce the tendency of the boat to turn up wind. It will also reduce leeway as it will help keep the keel deeper in the water. If the mast is adjustable, you can rake the mast forward. This helps move the center of pressure forward, which reduces the lever arm trying to round your boat up wind. In a gust, easing the main traveler will quickly reduce weather helm until the gust passes. In stronger winds, both easing the traveler and the main sheet will immediately reduce both the heel of the boat and the weather helm. This will also help you to maintain your course more easily and make things a lot more comfortable for your crew. But keep your foresail trimmed for the close haul to continue to get drive from the foresail. If your boat has a swing keel, raising the keel will move the center of lateral resistance further aft. Reefing the mainsail is also an option to consider. Reefing the main is an important maneuver to learn how to do properly and safely, as it is one major step to depower your sails to stay safe if winds are becoming stronger. And lastly, if conditions permit, you can also consider raising a larger foresail. That will cause the foresail to make a larger contribution to the net pressure of both the sails, which will move the center of pressure forward. Not all of these steps may be available to us as keelboat cruisers, but it's good to understand how each affects the weather helm. As a cruiser on a keelboat, easing the main sheet is usually my first choice to reduce excessive weather helm. It stands the boat up quickly, which makes things safer and more comfortable for the crew, and allows more easily maintaining a course upwind without rounding up. It's also the first step required for reefing the mainsail, so if conditions keep getting worse, you're already taking your first steps towards reefing the main. Okay, the last comment I'll make here is that moving the crew forward can increase weather helm. It's like the opposite of raising a swing keel, because it pushes the bow deeper into the water, which pushes the center of lateral resistance forward. Okay, so that's the end of this lesson. I hope that was all clear. In the next lesson, we'll look a little more at advanced sail trim, namely how to get the upper telltales on the foresail, both flying smoothly, to maximize drive for the entire foresail, not just the bottom portion. I hope you enjoyed this video. These videos are all the lectures I give on board my Cruise and Learn trips for the basic, intermediate, and advanced cruising courses for the Sail Canada course standards. And hey, to all you instructors out there, 
feel free to show these videos to your students if you think they're useful. Thanks everyone for watching and stay safe on the water.